Great. You guys can see my screen, right? Uh, one of you can respond if you can hear me and see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Okay, so today we'll learn three things. Okay. Uh, first one is functional interface. Okay. Second thing is uh, lambda expressions. Okay. The idea here is to basically give you the basics of them and get you to a level where you're comfortable working with lambdas. Okay. And uh, something called optional. Right. These are the three things. We'll take it slow because if you have any questions, you can let me know. All right. Cool. Uh, let me see how many people joined. Right. I will leave the chat window open just in case anyone has any questions. Cool. Okay. So uh, let's, before I go through each of them, uh, I want to first tell you why uh, such a concept was introduced. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about functional interfaces. Give me one second. Huh? There's too much of noise. Okay, yeah. So uh, in the world of Java, right, everything is treated as an object. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. Let me create a new project here. Uh, we'll try and understand why they came up with the idea of functional interface. Okay. Mm, this looks fine. This looks fine. What are we learning today? Uh, functional. This is what we're learning today, okay? We'll create three separate packages here. Uh, FI. Um, okay, let's start with this. Okay, so you guys uh, are familiar with the concept of interface, right? I mean, if you have uh, have gone through the basic course of Java, you know what interfaces are, right? Uh, I have a few questions before I begin. Let's say. Um, This is an interface, right? Everyone agrees with this? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Cool. Uh, can you tell me if this is an interface too? Uh, it's not there. Can you tell me if this is an interface or not? No, sir. This is not an interface? Okay, uh, who was that? Okay. You don't think this is an interface? Uh, we cannot define methods in interface. Huh. Okay. Sorry? Uh, interface contains default method. Huh. So uh, that's what, uh, how many of you think this is not an interface and how many of you think this is an interface? Sir, generally, uh, we write only abstract methods, uh -huh. but uh, a default method, I think introduced in some Java version. So yep. many of us are not familiar with default methods. That's pretty close from, to what I was looking for. 
hmm. apart from uh, default method hmm. like we are looking for only abstract methods correct so uh, when you say abstract i hope you understand that there is a keyword called abstract and that abstract doesn't apply in interface okay you, yes sir. basically unimplemented methods so i can tell you that what you're looking at right now is a perfectly fine interface okay why because as someone said i think it was mazer who said that in the java 8 version they made a few changes in the concept of interface before this the concept of interface said that uh, interface cannot have unimplemented methods okay so we all like you are if you're learning from college or something you're most likely to know that this is what the case is but since java 8 they changed the definition of interface okay yes sir so this guy sir uh, who was it hello hello anish anish right yeah yes sir you had a question and jdk 7 ke baad matlab protected bhi aaya tha na interface ke andar include hua tha हाँ हाँ नहीं जेडी के सेवन की नहीं जेडी के वन पॉइंट एट के बाद एट में मेजर चेंजेस लाए हैं ठीक है यस जो हम लोग आज सीखेंगे एंड द नेक्स्ट सेशन हम लोग बेसिकली जावा एट के वो सारे कंपोनेंट्स के बारे में सीखेंगे जो एक्चुअली इंडस्ट्री में यूज होते हैं जो तुम सीखोगे स्प्रिंग बुक में काम करते वक्त ठीक है तो बेसिकली दिस इज अस इज अ परफेक्टली करेक्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन इंटरफेस बिकॉज सिंस जावा एट यू कैन हैव द डिफॉल्ट की and the default methods they are expected to be a complete implementation uh, they are uh, meant to be a complete implementation and you can also have static methods inside the interfaces okay so uh, i mean i think static methods were already there but this is something that they added now why was this added so the thing is uh, there is a concept in software industry that you should always program to interface that means if if you want some class to use your functionality expose the interface to them and never the implementation class which is why you have seen that we use th this concept okay like i know that main cannot be written here. okay fine uh, we always use something like this okay we always use list we i mean it, it very rarely will you see something like this if somebody uses array list instead of list then they are doing it wrong okay so you would say you would declare this to be a type of list let's say integer okay and then you would give the concrete type okay so this is this approach this way of writing it is known as programming to the interface okay so the problem with this was the java guys figured out that once you create an interface like this let's say list right list has this was actually created before uh, you can see here that this is from java version 1.2 in the documentation it's written since 1.2 now there is a concept of functional programming which is quickly catching up okay functional programming is very different from the traditional programming that we do and java wants to stay in business they don't want to become an obsolete language so they started to introduce concepts like uh, functional interface lambdas and then they, many more things like stream apis map apis filter map and all that stuff okay but if you see if they want to add uh, a functionality to a particular list okay they don't have the option because back then interface only meant Are we connected? I dropped yes, out sir. for some time, right? Yes, sir. Yep, that's the problem with Zoom.
okay wait let me i have to report this to them um, okay is it something wrong with my internet nope it's fine okay i was i don't know for some reason i was logged out let me share my screen again okay so basically if you add one more method here let's say instead of i mean after size i include one more method called count then whichever classes like all of these classes they are going to be forced to implement that count right what does that mean it means that this is not backward compatible you must have heard of this term backward compatibility when android releases new applications they add this word backward compatibility the the concept of backward compatibility is that you add a new function which can also be used by older versions of your application okay so they realize that if they go with this current definition of interface then they can never actually modify an interface i mean if you add one method everyone has to implement it so how can we make sure that we add our own implementation and if there is a class that does not want to implement it will still go fine okay what do i mean by that if there is a method here i want to make my interface in such a way that if array list is willing not to implement this method it would be fine if link list is willing to implement this method that's also is fine okay this flexibility that they they wanted to bring which is why they introduced this default keyword default is always supposed to be implemented it's a this keyword tells java compiler that whatever method is written here has to be an implementation which is why you can never leave something like this oops oops my bad hold on give me a second you can never have something like this the compiler will give you an error saying that there is some problem with this thing add a method body okay all right so what is a functional interface now let's come to the definition of functional interface a functional interface is basically an interface with just a single function okay that's it now why do we even need a functional interface what's the purpose behind functional interface let's see let me create a class here okay uh, let me create a class called um print okay this print here uh actually let's convert this to an interface now never mind let's just keep it as this um this will have a simple void method print ठीक है this print method will just a okay that's what it's going to do now let's say you have a uh java class here which is known as printer okay and the idea behind this is uh this will have a void um sorry uh this is not it will just take print okay okay as you can see if somebody wants to uh implement this thing like if somebody wants to use this thing they'll probably have something called printer 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 perform printing now you have to pass a print object here so what you will do is you'll say print okay so you can see here that i mean another way of doing this is by uh let's say so th this is one way of doing it another way of doing it let's say you create a interface here okay let's call it this i print okay i print will have a public no not public uh, it's by default public uh print okay and then make your printer implement the i print okay we'll add the override tag here and then in printer here what i'll do is i'll say give me i print okay 
this also works fine. But as you can see here, uh, if you so in order for me to call this function, okay, I had to pass an object. If I do not pass this object, and I say new I print, I would still have to go ahead and implement something. Okay, I would have to implement my own function here, which will print something. So what are we basically doing here? In order for me to make this work, I have to pass an object. Java has always been uh, a type of language which has treated object as the first class citizen. If you see here, this guy doesn't do anything. This particular function does not do anything. It just calls the function of another object, right? But for that, you have to pass an entire object altogether. Okay, which means that objects are always treated as first class citizen. Languages like JavaScript, Python, there you have a flexibility where you pass the function as a parameter. You can never pass uh, in, in a typical Java way, you can never pass uh, a function just like that. You have to, you can either pass, let's say, a string or an integer and all of these things, which are again objects or the primitive types, int, byte, char, short or your custom object, but you can never pass a function into this thing. Okay. You can never have something like this passed into this. Okay. You can see this, that we have passed it, but at the same time, we had to define this thing, new I print, which is behind the scene. It's basically creating an object. Okay. To basically avoid this and to make sure that Java is more, I mean, like Java is catching up with the current languages and their patterns they introduce the con concept of lambdas, okay? Lambda expression. Lambda expression is something with which you can actually pass functions as arguments and not the object itself. But in order for lambdas to work, you have to understand the concept of functional interface. So you understand how all of these things are connected, right? They wanted to basically have a way to pass just the function and not the entire object, okay? That's why they figured out that we need lambdas for that. And in order for lambdas to work, they realized that we need to have one interface with just one function. Any interface that has just a single function is known as functional interface. Why is it functional interface? Because it performs exactly one thing. Okay. Clear with the concept of functional interface? Yes, you have sir. any? Okay, cool. So now we're going to see how we can write functional interfaces. Okay. So I'll go back to my iPrint. Okay. Uh, you can see that this is, uh, this is a, you can call this a functional interface, but the moment I do something like this, this by definition becomes a, ignore this thing. This by definition becomes a, a normal interface. Okay. This is not a functional interface because you have more than one unimplemented method. I, focus on the word unimplemented more than one unimplemented because a functional interface can only have one single unimplemented method, which means if you have something like this, this is perfectly fine and it's still considered a functional interface. If you have something like this, This too is a perfectly valid functional interface. Understood the difference between this and this? Any questions? So the whole idea behind a functional interface is that it will have exactly one unimplemented method. Okay, the moment you have more than one un unimplemented method, it becomes a normal interface. Okay, right. So we'll now see how we can actually write uh, a functional interface and how we can implement this. Thing. Question anyone? No? Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> so let's uh, work with this function. Okay. Print. All right. We come to this, uh, let's say, printer function, perform printing. I'll get rid of this for now. Okay. Actually, I'll get rid of all of these classes. For now. Sir? Yeah, any question? Who is this? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is Vishwesh. Sir, regarding the uh, functional interface, what you are told? 
yeah yeah we are in the functional uh-huh. interface yeah uh, when we assign with the uh, the particular function of the default or static value uh, hmm. that 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 becomes an implemented function right which one man uh, let me go back yeah uh, wait this one what are you what are you talking about so we are, we were speaking regarding the functional interface that Correct. that it should have only one unimplemented method or yes. function yeah and so like we attached this with a you know default and static void ha uh-huh. ha so sir i yeah huh. particularly these two points i didn't get that or how these become Achha. implemented no 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 so um, did you miss what when i was saying why they decided to go with the default one you understood why java guys introduced default right oh uh, yes sir right okay so basically what is the concept of functional interface functional interface says that uh, any interface that has one unimplemented method it is known as a functional interface okay that is the definition now you can have n number of implemented methods in there okay yeah. so for example let me give you an example okay let's say you are you have created a library which takes input as string and then it performs a mathematical operation before it performs a mathematical operation it basically uh, validates something I'll, i'll in fact i'll just write it down here okay it will be probably easier for you to understand let's say we have this interface called imath okay now this imath has two functions uh, actually it, it it is a functional interface because it has uh, it has this thing get result okay something like this where you pass input all right this is the guy this is the single method that needs to be implemented now let's say you are exposing this as a library okay so first thing that we need to do is to extract the number from the input right and then yes. we also need to validate the input so in that case because you're giving a library you want to put some additional functions which can help the client use this library okay what do i mean by this for example let's say i provide this validate okay uh let's just call it this okay it will do the validation for you and um yeah let's say let's just say you have one additional function here okay now okay let's say i am using your library okay uh i math if it get gets confusing let me know okay let's say i'm going to implement this thing now yeah. what i'm doing here is i'm basically uh trying to convert uh give me one second now huh? okay yeah <clears throat> so basically let's say at this point i realize okay i have no way to validate it myself so i mean i have to validate it myself so what i say is if input equals is equals null uh or let's say input dot length equals is equals zero okay this is my validation if this if this is the case then basically throw a new runtime exception saying invalid input okay run time exception invalid input okay so i am doing this here by myself okay what i am telling you when you use my function make sure you don't have to do this thing there is already a validate function that you can call and pass your input does it make sense to you yes sir got it cool so this is still considered a functional interface because you have one unimplemented method here but you can add these additional methods here because you want to provide some additional functionality which can be used by this guy by the functions yes. that is going to be implemented okay these are some some sort of helper functions you can say okay sir uh, then yeah. what is we can do the same in abstract class also right yeah we can do the same thing in abstract class also so then what is the use of using interface good question man why do you think we use interface because classes they inherently come up come with the restriction okay uh you can have 
So basically, I'll tell you why we have uh, interface and abstract class. Okay. They first came up with the idea of interfaces. Interfaces are purely function, as in interfaces cannot have member variables, right? You cannot have a member variable. You can have static variables here, but you cannot have member variables. But then they felt the need that we want to have the same functionalities of interface and member variables. That's why they came up with the concept of abstract class. Does it make sense? Okay, sir. Got it, right? Got it, sir. बट कुछ कुछ यूज केस में तुमको बस फंक्शन चाहिए ठीक है जहां पे तुम बस फंक्शन इम्प्लीमेंट करोगे कुछ कुछ जगह पे तुमको फंक्शन इम्प्लीमेंट भी करोगे एंड तुमको लोकल वेरिएबल भी चाहिए उस जगह पे तुम एबस्ट्रैक्ट क्लास यूज करोगे समझे सर वन सेकंड ये जो आप डिफॉल्ट मेथड लिखे ना सर इसका आई मीन बेस्ट यूज ये होगा कि आप मेन डॉट जावा में जाइए सर ओके सो हियर यू आर यूजिंग वैलिडेट ऑफ इनपुट राइट तो मे बी सपोज कर लो किसी और क्लास में भी मुझे वैलिडेट की लॉजिक लिखना है या फिर maybe n number of classes mein same logic likhna hai so instead of writing that logic i can directly write the logic in imath.java right imath.java matlab yahan pe to ye ha yahan par ye likh dunga correct 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 ye tumhara basic ek common list dega jahan pe tum sab kuch reusability ke liye ye deta hai tumko reusability yes sir perfect ab ab kya hoga ke maan lo tum yahan pe dusra koi imath maan lo hazar log use kar rahe theek hai and tumko laga oh shit uh, mere ko ek division function dena hai Uh, लेकिन मैं मतलब जिसको डिवीजन फंक्शन यूज करना है इंप्लीमेंट करना है वो यूज करेगा जिसको डिवीजन फंक्शन यूज करना नहीं है वो यूज नहीं करेगा अब अगर मैं यहाँ पे एक ऐसा दू वॉइड मान लो डिवाइड ठीक है और मान लो यहाँ पे हजार ऐसे क्लासेस है जो आई मैथ को इंप्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं वो सारे हजार क्लासेस ब्रेक कर जाएगा बिकॉज तुम इसको फोर्स करो कि तुमको ये इंप्लीमेंट करना पड़ेगा उस जगह पे तुमको ये चीज बैकवर्ड कंपैटिबल बनाना पड़ेगा समझे ना बैकवर्ड कंपैटिबल का कॉन्सेप्ट कि मैं एक एक क्लास या फिर एक फीचर में कैसे दू ताकि वो अगर किसी को चाहिए तो वो यूज कर सकते हैं अगर किसी को नहीं चाहिए तो वो यूज नहीं करेगा उस चीज okay, के लिए ऑप्शनल ऑप्शनल राइट हाँ ये बेसिकली ऑप्शनल टाइप का हो गया कि तुम यहाँ पे लिख के दोगे ऐसे नो इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ठीक है so basically just... sir in future if you want to upgrade the interface also with the help of default we can do that yes correct theek hai ab tumhara ye jo likh liya ab jisko maan lo implement karna hai maan lo isi ko implement karna hai apna khud ka divide function to yahan pe ek override dalega wo fir wo yahan pe bolega divide theek hai kahan gaya void divide ye divide hai na ha kya bol raha hai अभी क्या हो गया वन सेकेंड हाँ वट इज द प्रॉब्लम यूर मेक डिवाइड पब्लिक अच्छा हाँ हाँ ठीक है देखा तो अब मान लो ये आई मैथ कुछ मतलब एक इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ आई मैथ है जिसको डिवाइड फंक्शन खुद का इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो वो यहाँ पे खुद इम्प्लीमेंट कर सकते हैं जो नहीं करेगा इट्स फाइन ओवर राइडिंग कर रहे हैं हाँ बेसिकली ओवर राइडिंग कर रहे हैं तो वो लोग बेसिकली ऐसा खिचड़ी बनाया कि वो बेसिकली एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास ही हो गया ठीक है इन लोगों को बाद में पता चला कि ओह शिट हमने कुछ गलत किया तो इन लोगों ने डिफॉल्ट बना के इंट्रोड्यूस कर दिया ठीक है कूल परफेक्ट कूल अब आ, ये हो गया हमारा फंक्शनल इंटरफेस का कॉन्सेप्ट तो एवरी वन अंडरस्टूड हियर व्हाट एग्जैक्टली अ फंक्शनल इंटरफेस इज दिस इज अ परफेक्टली वैलिड फंक्शनल इंटरफेस बिकॉज देर इज एक्जैक्टली वन अनइम्प्लीमेंटेड मेथड नाउ लेट्स सी हाउ वी कैन राइट अ फंक्शनल इंटरफेस इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग लाइक से दिस लेट्स से आई मैथ i math new i math that's it you write your stuff here and your functional interface is done theek okay? uh, hai there are different types of functional interfaces you can make a functional interface work with generics i'll give an example for that let's say uh we have um we have this thing i i operation okay this is our interface class it just has uh, one method okay i operation what it does it takes two things it wants to know what type of data you're passing it 
as in what will be the data type of the input and what will be the data type of the output okay so it takes the input as t type t and it takes the output type as r okay and then it says i have this method called add uh, r add num where you pass me the num okay this is your functional interface ab yahan pe kitna bhi tum default method dal lo void static dal lo it's still going to be a functional interface acha one more important thing i wanted to show you guys here ke uh like we are programmers we are human beings right we are prone to making mistakes we can like we, you have like when you work with companies right you'll see they have interfaces with lots of like thousand lines of code thousand like 60 80 methods uh, in the same interface right so there is a possibility that you might have an interface with let's say uh, more than one implementation okay let me repeat what i said you can have an interface where you have lots of implemented methods either in the form of static methods or in the form of default methods but when you touch that interface you cannot see that or you somehow miss the unimplemented method and you go ahead and you add one more implemented method uh, one more unimplemented method which means that it becomes a non functional interface because there are now two unimplemented methods to prevent that from happening the java guys introduce this particular annotation which will give you and an functional interface right yes yes it will give you uh, this error immediately that if you have more than one unimplemented function it is basically not a functional interface so we have this thing functional interface okay now this looks fine there will be no complaints but the moment i come here and i say t add this okay this guy will not compile this annotation will give the compiler the indication that there is something wrong and it's not conforming to the definition of uh functional interface so this is a very useful thing like when you're implementing or working with functional interfaces you should use this thing because it is to stop you from making mistakes okay cool uh we'll go with this okay so now we have this method uh what do we do with this thing we will go ahead and implement this so i'll say i operation okay i want a long type uh as the return type i'm sorry input type and an integer as the return type okay i'll say i operation new i operation here you have to basically uh like add the number something like that theek okay. hai you have to implement your method here it can be any implementation you want but this is how you would have to write a functional interface now there are there are lots of different types of functional interface but there are mainly four or five types of functional interfaces that i want to talk about okay first thing is functional t okay then is okay then is uh i think they have something called predicate okay um do we did i miss something functional by functional by consumer ha huh. okay this much is enough because you'll mostly be working so what are these things any function okay uh one second sorry my bad so what is this any interface which has a method that accepts one value and returns a value that is called a functional like of interface of functional type okay it, it it can get a little confusing because what do you mean by interface of functional type isn't that what functional interface is so functional interfaces are essentially interfaces that have one method but then those methods have five different like those methods have many different categories most important are these five types so any function in an interface that takes in an input and returns an output that is called a functional i mean that method is called function okay what is bifunctional any method 
that takes in two parameters and returns just one is known as bifunctional. Okay. Any uh, interface that takes in a method that consumes uh, a data type but does not return anything is called a consumer. Any uh, well, this is a by consumer, right? So it, yeah. So any consumer that takes in two inputs but does not produce anything is called a by consumer. Anything that takes in just one data type and returns whether it's true or false is called a predicate. We'll go by uh, through them, each of them. Okay. Uh, let me actually take you through this. Uh, there is something called functional again non project items huh uh, do we have the functional okay never mind cool okay let's let's create a functional interface okay so my func this is an interface okay you can see that i operation here is already something which is a functional whose method is of the type functional because it consumes uh, a particular type of data and it returns another particular type of data okay then you can have one more uh, method which consumes which takes in like two and then returns one for example if i just do m here okay and i say m num1 m num2 okay this will be considered a by function because i'm consuming two returning one okay if i had something like this this is going to be of just consumer type okay because it is just consuming it is not returning anything if we have something like this, let's say D and D, okay? Data one, and you have D, data two, okay? This will be called a by, by, uh, by consumer, okay? And then if you have something like this, this will be called a predicate type of function. Okay. The five things, uh, do I need to create five separate classes so that it becomes easy for you by like five separate interfaces or will this be okay? Uh, it will be okay, uh, sir. It is only fine. the possible combinations. Correct. Correct. Only the possible combinations. It, it, it's very simple. Like the guy who takes in a value and returns a value is functional. The guy who takes in two values and returns one value is bifunctional. The guy who just takes in one value is a consumer. The guy who takes in two values but produces nothing is a y consumer. The guy who takes in a value and returns a boolean is a predicate. Okay, that's that's mm -hmm. all you need to know. Okay. Yeah. For, um, I mean, uh, interface which does not uh -huh. take uh, any parameter and does not return any parameter. That's just a, that's just a dumb interface, man. Doesn't do anything. Uh, no, no, it's like it, it will not. Okay, that is useless, right? Now that th there is something called supplier, I guess I'm not sure, but yeah, I mean it's it's not useless. It's just an interface with just some function. It doesn't do anything. I mean, it obviously does something, but it, uh, from the parameters point of view, it doesn't take anything in. I'm speaking of this completely from the generics point of view, like what the function is consuming, what the function is producing. From that point of view, you can have a functional interface where method takes nothing at all, returns nothing at all, or method takes in something, but does not return anything. There are many different, I think you could, you could actually, if you are interested, you can go ahead and read about this functional interfaces or oh, someone else had another question. Who was it? No, sure. No. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't have any question. I just wanted you to make uh, uh, like, you know, five different functions for uh, particular explanation uh, because Sorry. now it will be very fine. But uh, after a few days, if we go okay. on watching the recorded session, it might correct. be very difficult. Correct. Correct. Let's, let's do it then. Okay. Uh, let me uh, do this. This I operation here is just, uh, what is it going to do? It will actually let, let me do this. Uh, let me create five different interfaces. Okay. Uh, print 
let's just call it i acha i already have an i print right let me modify this thing i print will take in just one value it won't do anything okay uh this guy will have a print sorry t data okay are yaar t data okay and i'll just write on top of this thing this is a consumer okay this will be enough for you ha huh? no uh, yes sir yes sir sure cool cool and then let's say uh, i create another interface here called print2 theek hai and this will have uh, another print function void acha this this will actually take in two parameters this will take a t and a d okay and i'll say void print t data 1 d data 2 and this is essentially and again we we should not forget this thing functional interface theek okay. hai this will be a by consumer okay likewise when i push the code right i'll create it i'll not waste time right now okay but i'll make sure when the code is in github you have all of these things right by the way have you guys been able to access the code uh, from github for the last couple of uh, whatever sessions we've had anyone tried probably not cool uh let me just refactor this theek okay. hai okay so we know what functional interfaces are and uh, you know the different types of functional interfaces let's pick one functional interface let's uh let's take this um i operation guy okay let's work with this guy right okay so now what is lambda what is a lambda function lambdas are lambda expressions are essentially it's designed it's created to make the work look shorter uh it's it's basically meant to not make java very verbose okay lambdas have like uh, at the at the compiler level lambda has a lot of things but basically lambda makes it possible for functions to be passed as arguments okay let's see how that is done this is a um this is a, a particular interface right uh, let me yeah, let me actually move this and um let's see what can i write here that will give an example uh void maybe print data theek okay. hai final t data right run this is my interface operation what i want to do here is in my main method here there are two ways of writing lambda actually okay uh but before that should i show you the method let me think i don't want to confuse you if i give you this thing and i show you acha ha theek hai okay let's say this guy has a public this is the main class in which i'm writing this okay uh perform operation okay uh this will take a what can it take this will take an i operation ha ah, okay this will take an i operation of the type t operation acha can one of you tell me what's wrong with this why it's throwing me an error the right uh, t uh, before void correct because this is a generic method okay this is a generic method because this is not a generic class here this is a generic method so you have to define the type here okay cool <clears throat> all right so let's say this does something okay uh, all it does is that it just says operation dot print data and i'll just pass the data here okay now there are two ways of doing this thing firstly you create the i operation here okay how were we doing this thing we were doing it as new i operation okay this is the old way of doing this thing right uh yeah 
is this object ha huh, acha we have to basically specify what this is it's a i operation of string okay this will invariantly become a string acha one second i operation of string operation new i operation this is the plain way of doing it okay this is how you would do without the lambda function with the lambda you would basically convert this into acha let me write it in a separate way so that you can understand you can compare this i operation 1 okay here what you will do is val let me know if this is confusing to someone sir actually we are replacing new i operation string till printed data yeah so you see how the code is concise and short right it's it this is actually a one liner code that's it this is just a one liner code it's starting to look more like functional programming more like uh more like the kind of language which treats functions as first class citizen and not just object what you were doing here was you were essentially creating a new object that implements this thing okay you're not doing that here i mean behind the scene it's still being done that way but to to anyone it looks like you know it's it's just treating the you're just passing a function you're assigning a function here that's it this is your functions implementation if you see here there's no new keyword no this this blah 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 it's just a function written in a very shorthand form okay this whatever you did here you wrote it in a very short form like this let me know if you have any questions or if you have any confusion like what's happening here if you're confused let me know sir both are same right both are same yes both are same at the compiler level there are two different things that happen i'll not get into that detail because it's a very vast thing like if you want to understand how the java compiler treats lambda function then you have to go understand how byte byte code works and everything but that will be a very in depth course i wouldn't do that but behind the scene it does the same thing in fact if you look here right intellij already gives you replace it with lambdas if you do this thing they'll write the same thing that i've written here okay this is basically what lambdas are okay lambdas make it very concise lambdas make it look as if you are just you're just implementing the function and passing it you're not implementing an entire object okay uh another way of doing this now this is what we can do uh we can go ahead and uh we can say uh well we can take this main classes object so first thing what i'll do here is i'll pass each of them actually let's pass this let's call it 1 call it 2 okay uh i'll say um main um, dot perform operation here what i'll do is i'll pass the i operation 1 and then let's say hi there okay similar this is one way of doing it the second one is also the same uh as is that you're passing this thing differently hi there two okay hi there one hi there two what is the other way of doing it the other way of doing it is that you call it on the method itself you basically pass the lambda on the method itself let's see how that's done we'll say main perform operation okay here we're going to write this implementation data okay sys out hi there three theek hai and then uh acha what are we doing here we're not using the data now oh, we're uh one second acha what uh hi there one hi there ha theek hai okay we'll say printing theek hai and then data and in this data will pass hi there three and to make it look like one line ha huh? do you see the three different ways of doing it in one case we actually 
did the old way wherein we implemented this entire thing and then we passed it in the function where it's needed we're passing this thing uh this entire functionality and then we're uh, passing the string that it's going to print in this case we are implementing this okay we are implementing the same thing using just the lambda function so this part looks like you're just creating a function but if you look here it still looks like you're just passing an object here to this okay but if you look here at this point, it looks like you're just passing the function as a first argument and then the data as a second argument. In When you start working in the industry and companies that use Lambda, you will mostly see this kind of implementation, the third one, where they provide the implementation on the go. And when you start working with uh, stream APIs, maps and interfaces, like this is not, uh, when I say map, it's not the hash map or any kind of other map. There's a map of the stream API, okay? So when you start working with them, you'll see majority of them implementing the interface like this, okay? So this is what Lambda functions usually look. If you have any questions about this, ask me. Sir, before Java 8, how people... Uh, sorry, sorry, before what? Java 8, how people... Just... Your voice is breaking up, man. If you can type out the question or maybe readjust yourself. Before Java 8, how people used to achieve this? In Java, before Java 8. This is the way, yes. man. That's how they used to do. Have you, has any of you uh, done like Android programming? In And I have done, so I was an Android developer before it uh, became this. Uh, in Android, you would have to pass callbacks. There's a concept of callback. And every callback was basically a long implementation of an interface. So this, the, the way you see this, this is actually pre Java eight. Pre Lambda. Okay. This is, this part is post Lambda. Question. Yeah. Yeah. What question? Abhishek. Hello. I'm not able to hear you. Yeah. Abhishek? Achha, let's do one thing. No? Uh, Abhishek can stay. Everyone else, if you want to break, uh, let's take a break for five minutes or something. Come back at around like 9.35 or something. Okay. No, no, not 9.35, 9.3 or something. Yeah, Abhishek, tell. Sir. Please explain lambda function again, sir. Line, I am confused, little bit confused, sir. Uh, line number, which one? You want the lambda function and what? 17. Line number 17, you want? 17. Yeah. You want me to explain yes, this? Yes, sir. Achha, okay. Look at this operation. You understand the generic methods, right? This is a generic yes. method, right? Yes. So yes. this guy says that I need to have an interface, a functional interface passed to me, and I also need a data to me, okay? So what we did here was we implemented that uh, interface in a separate way. And then we basically uh, passed this interface itself to uh, this. This is your line number 17. Because this method takes in two things. It takes an interface and then it takes the data. So we created the interface. I mean, we implemented the interface here. Then we passed it here. And then we pass this thing here. This is This part is not at all Lambda, okay? This is why I've written it pre-Lambda. This is where Lambda comes in. If you look at this part, right? It uses that new keyword I operation string because every, every time, look at this. This is, what is this doing? This is creating an object, okay? So you had to create an object first and then pass it to your uh, method, okay? If you look at this, you're creating the same thing, but you're creating it differently. There's no keyword, nothing like that it looks as if you're just implementing the function, isn't it? Does it not look like you're just implementing the function? I mean, sir, both line number 17 and line number 20 are both are same, sir. No, that this, so, so this, this from line number 10 to 15 and line number 20, they're same. Yes, sir. Okay. Line number 17 and line number 22, they're the same thing. Now line number 17 and line number 24 are also the same thing, but written in different way. Okay. Are you still confused? Yes, sir. Um, Achha. Confused. Achha, tell me, uh, tell me what, what, what part is confusing to you? So see, 
टू थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग है हाँ टू थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग है फर्स्ट थिंग इज वी आर इम्प्लीमेंटिंग द इंटरफेस दिस इज एन इंटरफेस राइट सो इंटरफेस टू बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड फर्स्ट ओके दिस पार्ट इज डूइंग द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ओके the same implementation is being converted to one single line yeah, which is so this lambda function theek hai this is your lambda function why do we call this lambda so, function because you can see here with this new operator it looks as if you're creating a new object you can see here that we create a new object with the new keyword right so this has to be created as an object first and then you can do whatever you want to do with this here you're just implementing the function you're not creating the new keyword or anything you're just providing the function if you look here right we have to add this new keyword and then this bracket and everything and then we have to go go ahead we have to write this at override annotation then we have to write this entire method here along with the string data then we have to start implementing right in order to reduce the number of lines what they said is you focus only on the function only on implementing the function you don't have to write this jargon this from new to this this entire bullshit you don't have to write you just implement whatever you want to do inside of this okay and we'll do it for you so what is happening here look at this this is a function print data this is a function which has a name and this has a data type of string and data we are converting this entire thing into this single okay yes, does that make sense yes, now sir. why i was saying that functional interface cannot have two uh, uh, in, uh, methods because if functional interface could have two methods then let's say there were print data 1 having string data print data 2 having string data at this point how would the compiler know which one you're calling you understand the point right Yes, Correct. So what you wrote here as this, you shortened it to this. Since there is only one function, you don't need to mention the name here. So they removed the naming part, and they do. They didn't want the string there either. Sorry, one second. They didn't want the like you already know the data type here. So they put the. They just pass the argument here and not the data type, and then they said they just provide your implementation within the curly braces. That's it. all this override tag public void all that stuff is not needed okay make sense yes sir sir functional okay. interfaces are made just to use lambda expressions right functional interfaces make it possible make lambdas possible okay okay because i i told i told him just now that if you have one more method called print data 2 with another um, unimplemented method right this guy will get confused that i won't which one it's calling they have the same data um, data argument type right what is it so that's why functional interfaces are basically containing one method one unimplemented method and that is what makes this this thing possible this this is concise and everything because the compiler knows that when i look at it i'll figure out what the name of the they don't it doesn't really need the name of the function it will figure out the uh, data type from here itself i'll show you one more example okay uh is it yeah i'll just wait for two more minutes and we'll show one more example so yeah uh if in the main interface suppose uh, there are two methods with different uh, arguments like one is having integer and one is having string yeah and in lambda function we have defined like this only like in the line number 24 and mm. if we pass one um, if for input once if you pass integer and once we, if we pass string it will automatically map that or that, we cannot that uh, use it for two methods that won't work they don't they didn't want to get into that confusion which is why they said that if you're writing functional interface make sure it has only one method if you want to have another uh, int uh, wala part mm -hmm. then you make it default okay okay understood they yeah, did not want to get into that confusion so they said there will be only one method you can have n number of arguments in there but that's it mm, do okay. not have another unimplemented methods okay yeah
Okay. Uh, so I showed you an example of uh, a lambda function, which basically takes in an input and it doesn't do anything. So this is just a uh, consumer function. Let me show you how you can write a functional method in functional interface. Okay. That's a little confusing, but yeah, that's how it is. Okay. This is I operation. Let's call another uh, interface. Let's call it I operation two. Okay, I operation two. Uh, what do we want here? We want to make it consume a function and return a function. Okay. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to say T and R. Okay. This guy has a return type of R and it has something called convert. Convert T data. Again, that's it. Uh, in the lambda function, let's say I'll work with the main itself. I'll say public. Here I'm going to give T and R both, and I'll say uh, uh, sorry. This this will just perform it. So perform. Um, what are we performing here? Uh, convert perform conversion okay so what will it do it will basically take uh, the i operation 2 of t and r okay um, let will say i operation 2 i'll just call it i operation and it will take the data type of t okay data Yeah. Um, right. Now, what it does is uh, it will basically print the converter type. Okay, so I'll say i operation dot convert data. Okay, you've seen these two ways, so I'm, I'm, I won't show you this way. I'll show you this this particular way how we write that. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll say main perform conversion. Okay. Here you are going to give the data. Uh, and what you will do is, let me show you how I'm doing this thing. You will basically take in the type of R, right? So, um, I operation R. Yep, data. So I don't have access to this particular R operation, right? Uh, yeah, so how do I? Acha, one second. Uh, let's change this method a bit differently. Class. R. I was missing this. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Convert. What am I missing here, dude? Convert. Class. Then this will have a problem because you now have to pass the R here. So R. Sorry. Class. R. I think this uh, this will become a bit too difficult for you guys to understand. Never mind. This will become a bit difficult for you guys, so let me scrap this. Yeah, we don't want to confuse you. Actually, let me let me think how I can show it to you. Uh, if we take uh, sorry, instead of okay, fine. Let's actually take this. We don't need to do this. Take okay. yeah. Uh, okay. this data and it will just call this okay i operation dot convert just pass the data okay how do we do this thing here uh we'll actually implement this thing um say uh return type mm. 
If you're passing that will once again. Hmm. No, no. Okay, how do I show you a by function? Give me a second. Let me by function interface. This is functional interface. How do I show it to you without making it confusing? No. Mm. Scrap this. Okay, let's see. Um, maybe not this. Maybe let me just give you this. Uh, data and um, somebody will uh, let's say say hello or something. Void. Achha, what if I want to return something? Uh, achha, let's do this. Uh, let's say I want to return this type of data. Okay, and I want to say um, add number. Okay, and I want to take a T of data. For that, I would have to give the, or, or just, uh, let's make it simple. Add three, we'll just add three here and yeah, R is the data type. Take it. All right. This is it. This is this has a return type. Uh, what is this thing? Uh, add three. This perform conversion guy. This will actually take. Uh, no, this is perform operation, right? Oh. This is perform addition. Public. R void perform operation two okay i operation r operation two uh, this will also take the data data and it will say uh, operation two dot add three and then just do the data okay uh, this obviously returns something, so I'll go ahead and do this. I'll do a system print in. Okay. Uh, main dot uh, perform operation two. Here, what I'm going to do is I'll say data, okay, and data plus three. Okay. Uh, and let's say five itself. Okay. Okay. What did we just do here? So this is another uh, interface which takes in, which is a parameterized interface. This is basically a functional interface. Okay. Because this takes in, it's not, it's not exactly a functional interface. It's like it consumes it and it returns the data. So what you had as T and R, you can consider both of them as being R. Okay. So this is a, functional interface, it is taking something, it is applying a value to it, and then it's returning back. Okay. So you can see the difference between this and this here. Okay. What is the difference here? In my data type here, I basically have, I have to give this curly brace and I have to write that this is the, uh, this is what's happening. This is the statement that's being executed here. Okay. If there was a return statement here, I would have to probably go ahead and write the return statement. But if you have an implementation where you just have a uh, like a single operation, like just one line of code and then return, you can convert it to like this. What do I mean by this? If you did not write it like this, you would have to write something like this. You would say int, sorry, uh, you would say return data plus three. Okay you would have written something like this. Instead of this, you can see that it, it says that you can uh, replace this with Lambda expression. So this return is a return. If you have exactly one single line, and that is also the thing that is being returned there, then you can just write it like this. Okay. 
any confusion between this and this i know it got a bit confusing at the time of implementing i was just trying to make things simple here but tell me if you have any issue or if you want me to explain this thing again if you have a return type if you if you have to return something and that is the only line that you have there then you can just do this whatever the result is it will be assigned there and returned because i otherwise what we would have done is something like this we would have said int result let's say data plus 3 and then we would have returned this result right instead of doing that you can write you can also write it like this it does the same thing okay instead of doing this instead of doing this line we just wrote it like this so if you have some return type, you just need to pass the data and it will be returned automatically. Okay. Confusion here. And, and this is, by the way, the second, uh, I mean, second argument to the same function. You can see that this is a function which takes in two arguments. It takes this and it takes this data separately. So you passed your function here. This is, this is you passing a function instead of an object. You just pass the function here along with the second argument. And it happened just like that. It, it worked just like that. Okay. In fact, we can actually go ahead and run all of these operations just to verify. Let's see. We'll go one by one. Okay. Let's see what happens. The output here says printing hi there one. This is coming from here. Okay. Then printing hi there two. This is coming from this. Okay. Then you have this one printing hi there three. And then you can see the number eight. How is it happening? It's basically going here uh performed uh, this it's basically implementing this interface by using this function so all of this jargon you would have seen new keyword override and then giving the function name along with the data type and everything all of that is being moved away okay in fact you can modify this like if i just modify it uh i can say r data one r data two let's say two okay I'll just go back here and I will change it to the one data two. Okay. And here, what I'll do is I'll just say here, you'll say data one, data two, let's say data one plus data two, and that's it. Remove third parameter from perform operation two. Acha, wait. Ah, okay. Uh, what is it? Data one, data. Ah, okay. Remove five and five. Yeah, good. Okay. So see what I did here. I passed in two functions here. What is the problem with this? Navig data two is already defined in the scope. Achha, my bad. Huh. Okay. So this is again a, a functional interface that returns something. It takes in multiple parameters, more than one parameter. Okay. And this is a function that uses this uh, interface. So it basically calls this function add three method and it takes in the data one and data two. Here, how you implement it, you implement. So this part of the argument is basically passing the data. Okay. This part of argument argument is just passing the function. You can see that you have taken multiple parameters. You've taken data one, data two, and then you have just performed the operation. You're not, you didn't say a, add a return statement here. You just perform this operation and that's it. Any questions here on this? Anybody wants me to explain again? Sir, hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, Abhishek. Hello. Sir, line number two, this is a confusion. Uh, sir, line number which one which one 26 this one ye wala tum ek baar chat mein likho ha mere ko line number 26 ko explain karna hai to acha tum line number 26 ko aap jo older method se likhte hain sir use ek one more ek word write kare acha older method acha theek hai acha mere ko samajh mein aa gaya kahan pe tumhara confusion hai रुक जाओ अंडू करने दो इसको
एक मिनट हाँ क्या था हम लोग का यही था ना हाँ यही था ठीक है यही था हम लोग का हम लोग ये तुमको समझ में आया कि हम लोग यहाँ पे क्या किया डेटा फिर हमने यहाँ पे किया डेटा प्लस थ्री और हमने फाइव पास किया ठीक है इसको जाके चेंज कर देता हूँ मैं कंफ्यूजन कहाँ से आया समझ में आ गया ठीक है ये हमारा ओल्डर मेथड था ये तुमको समझ में आया यहाँ तक क्या कर रहे हैं हम लोग यहाँ पे यस सर ठीक है ये समझ में आ गया ना तो इसमें हम क्या कर रहे हैं इसमें हम लोग बस एक पैरामीटर यूज कर रहे हैं एंड उसमें हम लोग यहाँ पे रिटर्न लिखते हैं वो रिटर्न नहीं कर रहे वहां पे बस हम लोग जस्ट ऑपरेशन लिख रहे हैं एंड वो ऑटोमेटिकली रिटर्न हो जाएगा ये है तुम्हारा सेकंड आर्गुमेंट ठीक है दिस इज द सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट टू दिस फंक्शन ओके नाउ लेट मी क्रिएट वन मोर ऑपरेशन ओके आई थिंक दैट वॉज द कंफ्यूजिंग पार्ट लेट मी क्रिएट वन मोर ऑपरेशन आई विल टेक two arguments of the same type this time okay and i'll return something okay so i'll say i operation 3 theek hai isme hum log same t type ka data lenge and isme hum t return karenge theek hai isme hum log karenge add add 5 kya karenge hum log isme t uh data 1 t data 2 डन ठीक है अब इसमें एक फंक्शन लिखते हैं जिसमें हम बोलेंगे पब्लिक टी ठीक है वॉइड परफॉर्म ऑपरेशन थ्री ठीक है इसमें क्या लेंगे हम लोग इसमें लेंगे आई ऑपरेशन थ्री ऑफ टी डेटा ठीक है मेरे को पता नहीं टी क्या होगा ऑपरेशन ऑपरेशन थ्री और फिर इसमें हम लोग लेंगे टी डेटा एक मिनट टी डेटा वन टी डेटा टू ठीक है डन अब हम लोग इसमें स्विस आउट कर रहे हैं सिस्टम नोट आउट इसमें हम लोग क्या करेंगे इसका जो रिटर्न टाइप होगा वो हम लोग देंगे ठीक है इसमें हम लोग क्या कर रहे हैं सॉरी नॉट परफॉर्म ऑपरेशन इसमें हम लोग कर रहे हैं ऑपरेशन थ्री डॉट एड एड फाइव ठीक है इसमें हम लोग डेटा वन पास करें डेटा वन एंड डेटा टू दोनों यहाँ तक तुमको समझ में आया क्या हुआ यस सर ठीक है अब क्योंकि हमने यहाँ पे एक इंटरफेस uh, बनाया जो दो चीज देता है एक वापस करता है ठीक है यहाँ तक सब कुछ सही है अब कैसे हम लोग इसको लैमडा में लिखेंगे वो देखते हैं ठीक है मेन परफॉर्म ऑपरेशन थ्री इसमें पैरामीटर क्या क्या है फर्स्ट पैरामीटर है ऑपरेशन थ्री इंटरफेस ये यहाँ पे तुम पहले ये न्यू कीवर्ड से इंप्लीमेंट करते हैं उसके बदले में तुम बस अपना जितना फंक्शन तुम्हारा जो फंक्शनल पार्ट है वो पार्ट तुम इसमें पास करोगे दूसरा क्या है दूसरा तुम्हारा है ऑब्जेक्ट डेटा वन दूसरा है तुम्हारा ऑब्जेक्ट डेटा टू ठीक है अब देखते हैं कैसे होता है अच्छा यहाँ पे ऑब्जेक्ट क्यों आ रहे हैं बिकॉज हमने टी में कोई एक्सटेंड नहीं लगाया तो बाई डिफॉल्ट वो पेरेंट ऑब्जेक्ट को ले रहे ठीक है तो फर्स्ट मैं ये करता हूँ एक यहाँ पे फर्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट सेकेंड आर्ग्यूमेंट ठीक है तो ये फंक्शन क्या करेगा ये फंक्शन जो भी है दो नंबर उसके साथ फाइव ऐड करेगा तो अगर मैं फाइव एंड थ्री दे रहा हूँ एट एट के साथ हम लोग फाइव ऐड करेंगे तो थर्टीन होगा ठीक है अब ये वाला पार्ट तुमको समझ में आएगा ये सेकंड आर्गुमेंट थर्ड आर्गुमेंट है अब देखते हैं कि फर्स्ट आर्गुमेंट हम लोग कैसे इंप्लीमेंट करेंगे तो मैंने तुमको बोला था कि यहाँ पे जो चीज है उसको तुम बस एक शॉर्ट बस बस इतना पार्ट तुमको देना पड़ेगा ठीक है तो उसमें हम लोग पहले फर्स्ट ब्रैकेट देते हैं एंड कितने आर्ग्यूमेंट्स है यहाँ पे यहाँ पे हमारे पास दो बेसिकली आर्ग्यूमेंट है डेटा वन डेटा टू ठीक है ऐसा है क्या हाँ डेटा वन डेटा टू तो हम लोग वहां पे इंप्लीमेंट करेंगे हम लोग बोलेंगे कि डेट डी वन ठीक है डी टू ठीक है अब नॉर्मली हम लोग क्या लिखेंगे नॉर्मली हम लोग ऐसे लिखेंगे रिटर्न डी वन प्लस डी टू प्लस फाइव ठीक है ना ये लिखेंगे हम लोग नॉर्मली अगर लिख रहे उसको ना लिख के तुम इसको पूरा सीधा ऐसे लिखो d1 वन प्लस डी टू प्लस फाइव समझ में आया यस yes, सर ठीक है yes, तो ऐसे हम लोग हाँ कोई क्वेश्चन है दिस दिस इज हाउ वी पास मल्टीपल पैरामीटर्स 
एंड वी जस्ट इम्प्लीमेंट द पर्टिकुलर थिंग अगर यहाँ पे मेरा कोई रिटर्न टाइप ना होता दिस देन आई वुड हैव टू रैप इट विथ कर्ली बेसिस ठीक है और अगर मेरे यहाँ पे मोर देन वन लाइन होता ठीक है अगर हम लोग यहाँ पे एक लाइन से ज्यादा ऑपरेशन कर रहे हैं देन यू वुड हैव टू डू इट लाइक दिस ठीक है समझ गए yes, ठीक है तो दिस एक्चुअली कंप्लीट आर लैमडा फंक्शन will now move on to options which is a very easy thing but just for now let me know if you have any issues if you have any problems understanding this or if you want me to repeat something cool uh 5 minutes ka break lete hain and then we'll come back and learn option it's a very easy thing theek okay? hai google countdown countdown are ye kya ho gaya फाइव मिनट्स का लेते हैं ब्रेक ठीक है
okay uh i hope everyone is back we'll uh understand the last thing which is basically optional okay uh i'll recap here till now till this point what we did so uh we learned about functional interfaces we learned that interfaces after java 8 can have uh, default methods which need to be implemented okay we can go to our imath operation uh, we can have a default method. We learned this. We also learned that any interface that has exactly one unimplemented method is called a functional interface. Okay. We also learned that in order for us to not make mistakes, we can use this functional interface annotation, which will automatically give us a warning if we have more than one unimplemented method. Okay. We learned about functional interfaces. Now we saw how you can write Lambda functions. We saw how things were written before Lambda. You had to write new, then you had to create this object implementation. Then you had to write the override. You had to write this public void, print data and all the things. Everything became very concise and it looked as if you were just writing the function. This is what you write in the function and you were you're just writing the function the compiler behind the scene it adds all of these things for you okay so this expression is called lambda expression okay and then this type of function which accepts a uh, interface is called a lambda function okay here at this point this particular part here this this part is called a lambda expression or a lambda function okay we saw how we can have uh, just one uh, function. Uh, like, I mean, basically, uh, hang on. yeah, basically an interface, I operation interface, which does not return anything. Okay, uh, but before that, we learned about different types of um, functional interfaces. An interface that consumed a method and I mean consumed uh, something and returned something was known as functional An interface that consumed more than one basically two that's why the word by and returned one is called by functional one uh, I mean an interface that just consumed a value is known as consumer uh, interface that consumed two values were called by consumer interface that took in a value and then returned a boolean would be called a predicate function okay and we actually saw this thing here um did i write that i think i wrote that in somewhere i print huh so this is a consumer this is a by consumer i'm, I'm gonna go ahead and write a few more consumers for you okay and then we saw the lambda functions here uh this this is where we just pass the functionality we just write the functional part and we don't write all this override and stuff like which is why this is called this is going towards functional programming. You're just focusing on the function. And if you look at this method, it looks as if you are passing data one, data two, along with it, just a function. You're not passing an object like how you're doing it here. In here, you were just passing an object. You were, if I look at this piece of code, I don't know what's going on. I have to go inside this method and then figure out, okay, there is a method that calls this, right? If you look here into this part, you can see that I am just passing a function, okay? That's why it is more like as if you're treating the function as a first class citizen. This is uh, what it is. Uh, yep. Now we will actually learn about um, something called optional, okay? Now, as I always do, before I teach you about optionals, I will tell you why the optional was required. Okay. So let me go ahead and write a simple class here. Uh, mm, how do I say it? Get nah, data uh, fetcher. Okay. This is a simple class. Okay. Public. And let's say I have sample. Let's say I have a class called data. This data has two things, private, uh, integer, number, okay? Private, string, name, okay? And what I want to do here is I want to generate the getters and setters. So if you are on, uh, if you're using IntelliJ, you would do alt insert, 
Okay, Alt Insert would give you this option. You can see you have constructor, you have getters, setters, you have getters, setters. So I want getters and setters. Okay, of these two. This will only happen if you're using IntelliJ, by the way. For Eclipse, God bless you. Uh, and for this constructor, you can have this, wherein it takes all of these things. Okay, that's it. This is my data class. Let's say, let's say this class calls some API. Imagine that this class calls some API over the internet. Okay, some link over the internet, and this API, uh, this uh, API call can either return an actual data or it can return nothing. Okay, so we'll say data. Okay, it comes from the options folder, and we'll say um, fetch data. Okay. Right. Method that calls data. What I'll do here is I'll return a new data. Okay. What do I need here? I'll give the number as one. I'll give this as H H H. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'll close all of these things. For now, I'm just hard coding it. But imagine, like when we work with Spring Boot application, you'll see that those will make API calls. But for now, let's just say that this data comes from some link that you're calling. OK. Uh, this is my data feature, which is kind of like a library. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go to our main class here. So there's a main, or let's just, in this case, let's just call it driver class. Okay. And this driver class will have a main method. Okay, here I'm going to say data. Uh, sorry, data fetcher, data fetcher, new no, data fetcher, done. Um, and uh, what can we do? Uh, mm, okay. Yeah, data, data, data fetcher dot fetch data okay that's it uh what i'll do now is i'll say final string message Achha, i'll do one more thing here okay i'll basically implement the two string okay this will be the two string of this cool uh don't worry about what i just did right now i'll explain i'll take you through everything so what i'm doing here is fetched data plus data fetcher, sorry, data dot to string. Okay, done. Um, I'll just print this. Let's run this. You can see uh, fetch data, data number one, name HHH, okay? This works fine. Let's say, because you're calling over the internet and sometimes the network calls fail, Okay, let's say the internet is not working or something, your data fetcher could not fetch data. What will happen then is it would not return a data, it would return something like null, okay? Any method in Java that doesn't return a data, it will become automatically null, okay? Now, if I run this, you can see that I've got the dreaded null pointer exception. This is, it's it's also known as NPE, and in the Java world, this is a minus. Like it's a very big problem, because null pointer exception it can be thrown anywhere. You have no idea where it's going to go wrong. Okay, it can be thrown anywhere. Okay, to the, so the primitive way, the Java way of handling this is, when you get this data, you basically check this. If data is not equals to null then basically execute this line okay and you can see that nothing got printed because there's nothing here but imagine you have 500 such api calls or you call this method 500 times which means you have to you have to check this whether this data is null or not 500 times right so this is the best practice. Actually, in order for you to avoid null pointer exception, you it is a best idea to basically uh, 
check before you use the data, we're using the data here, before you use the data, it's best that you check whether it's null or not, okay? But programmers, because they're human beings, they tend to forget this thing. This is ideally the best practice, okay? But because, you know, programmers are human beings, they always forget this thing, okay? Because if you have like 50 times you have to do this thing, then you, there, there are chances that you might not actually check this thing in, let's say, 49th or 48th line, and then it will fail there, okay, if the data is null. To avoid that, to force the programmer to do the check, they introduced option, okay? Like how they introduced func at functional interface there to prevent the error, they introduced the concept of optional to do something like this, okay? Now let's see how optional works. In my data feature, I'll have the same thing here, okay? Um, public, optional, and this basically asks you what type of, so again, this is a generic type because you can use optional. Optional, you can think of as a wrapper around the object, okay? It will just wrap the null object. Uh, you So that, that's a generic type. You can put anything here. You can see it. the signature of this is T extends object. So I'll just say data, okay? And I'll say fetch data safely, okay? This is my improved API. This is my improved method that will uh, always return me this thing. So before I go into the implementation of this, let's see how that impacts this guy, okay? I will say data D, okay? I'll say data fetcher dot fetch data safely. Now, if you see the compiler gives you an error, it says you cannot use data here like this. You have to wrap this thing with an option, option, okay? Why? Because here the here it is designed in such a way that it guarantees that you will always have option, okay? You will never have a null. Hear me out again. In this case, okay, the fetch data was either giving you a data or it was giving you null. But when you make a method return optional, you always have to return option, which means that you always get the wrapper uh, as the method return call. The wrapper can have empty value or some value in there, but you are always guaranteed to have that wrapper. Is this part clear to anyone or does someone want me to explain again? Okay, cool. So basically this method here, it will it is always guaranteed to give you something it it will never give you null it will always it is always guaranteed to give you option okay so from this guy's point of view it has to capture it like this it will say optional of data i'll call it d optional okay or data optional and then what do i do here i say data op i'll basically put uh, an if block here i'll say data optional dot is present there is this is present which is kind of like checking if the data is null or not if it is present then you basically print this message okay you can say fetch data safely to differentiate between this and that and here you will say data optional dot get okay so this get method will basically give you the object inside the wrapper. Optional is the wrapper. This method here is guaranteed to always give you the wrapper. So you never, you're, you're never going to run into a null pointer exception because the method call always returns you an option, okay? Inside the optional, you will check if the method is present or not. If it is present, you will do this and print this, okay? Now, if Sir, you, yeah. What if uh, like uh, the main problem of uh, using uh, option is that uh, the programmer might tend to forget uh, data not equals to null uh, hmm. writing right yeah. at line number 10. <coughs> yeah so there uh, we might uh, expect null pointer exception yeah. what if i don't write data optional dot is present then you won't get it right like uh, so there is a way to do it if you write data optional dot get here there is a uh, like it comes down to how you implement so optional actually has a lot of things like optional has uh empty off nullable and off we'll talk about these things but if you just say data 
uh, I mean, data optional dot get right. And let's say there is no data, it will still give you a null. So you are basically meant to check this thing. Does, does that answer your question? Let me repeat that again. You, you're saying that I'll just get the data optional dot get. Okay, I'm not really checking if it's present there or not, then you will get the null value there itself. Sir, what happens? Uh, um, can you just comment if data optional dot is present? And uh, just write, uh, don't write the if block. Okay, huh, like this, right? Oh. This will give you this warning here that you have to check if this is because the contract of this is not null. You have to check okay. whether this has this thing or not. So if you're a smart programmer, you will wrap this inside this if else block, and you'll get this thing. There's one more way of doing this thing. Like if you think that writing this is verbose, there is another way of doing this. You would you can say data optional dot. This is where lambda function comes in. If present, okay. You can see that it will give you the data. And then you can basically do this. Like you can just write this system printout message here or because this, okay, wait. You just copy paste this line here, okay? Okay. So if you just call, if, if you remove this, if you don't do this check here, okay? and you get some value, then you're back to square one, because then you will have to check whatever value you got from optional, whether it's null or not. Okay. This is where uh, basically, like, I'll show you how optional, how you can wrap your data inside optional. There is a possibility that uh, this get method itself can give you a null pointer exception, but that is into how we're, I mean, I'll explain that when we go into how we wrap the actual object. Okay. But from the user's point of view, this is the guy who's using this API, right? From this guy's point of view, this method will always, it's guaranteed to always return an option. Now it is this guy's duty to basically check this or not. From the API's point of view, if you look at from this guy's point of view, okay, he, it is a library. He's basically saying that I am never going to give you something which is null, okay? From the library's point of view, he will always give you something, It's which is a wrapper. Now the wrapper can have a value, and it cannot have a value, okay? But the user can never blame the library that you have given me something which is null. Does that make sense? Why we're using optional? Yes, sir. When you, when you look at this optional, you have to think from the guy who's providing the functionality, okay? So if this guy, the data fetcher library, has everything wrapped inside optional, then whoever is using it, it is his responsibility to basically check whether the value is there or not. But as a contract, this guy always promises that I will always give you a wrapper. I will never give you a null point exception. I will not be the reason for your NPE. I'll always give you a wrapper. It's up to you how you use that wrapper. Okay. So from the data fetches point of view, optional is the way to go. Okay. What will happen here is this guy, the guy who's using it, it is now up to him whether he wants to check it or not. He, if he's an idiot, he'll go ahead and call this method. Okay, he'll ignore the warning and he'll immediately start coding and then that will again throw a null pointer exception. But this guy cannot come back to this guy blaming that you gave me, you promised me a data object, but you're sending me null. Okay, this is very important because you have to understand why the optional was created. Okay, this guy is guaranteed to give, if, if, you, if I call fetch data, you're telling me that fetch data will always return a data. So somebody can say, okay, it's already fetching data, so I don't need to do a, uh, a check there, right? But if you wrap this inside an optional, you're saying that I will always give you something, but it may or may not have the value. So they are then it is then their responsibility to avoid the null pointer exception. Okay, cool. Uh, any questions about that? No, sir. Cool. All right. Now, uh, how we can do this thing? This is a plain way of using it. You can say that data optional is present. If it is present, it's kind of like checking this thing. If it is present, then basically call this get operation and then print it. The other way of doing this is you you basically pass a lambda function to this if present uh, keyword. I'm sorry, if present function, you pass a lambda function and that is it. This is done. If you just want to print this out, uh, you can convert it to just a one liner. Okay. You can just convert it to a one-liner saying S out and then just print data one, done. Uh, it, it'll then tell you something about replace the method reference, huh? That's it. Okay, you haven't learned about method reference. I haven't explained about method reference. So don't worry about that. 
next day I will uh, explain about method reference. But for now, I'll just do it like this. Okay. Never mind. It'll tell you to always replace with method reference. Never mind. Huh. So this is uh, how you can use optional. Now there are. So this is the consumer part. Like the driver is the consumer of the option. Data fetcher is the producer of optional. And there are basically three ways or three types of optional that you can produce here. Okay. Let's look at that. If you have no value going out, okay, you will always return optional of empty. Okay. If your data, let's say you made an API call and you basically checked if the API call succeeded or not, and you realize that it's a it, it didn't succeed, you can return an optional of empty. In that case, if they do this thing, it will never enter the if present block. Okay. It will never enter this block. So this is the producer part. Another way of is optional off. Optional off means when you actually have a value, like when you have a concrete value, I can just say new data. You know what? I'll just comment this out. And I'll put a comment here. When there is no value for sure. Okay. Another one is return optional off okay this off is what wraps it here you can say new data and then you can pass two and then you can say sss okay this you would write when there when there is value for sure okay now there may be a possibility where the value is can either be uh the value either can be there or cannot be there. Okay. In that case, optional gives you something called optional of nullable. Okay. Which is basically a combination of okay, which is basically a combination of the above two. Combination of above two. Okay. This might get a little confusing. Uh, just bear with me. Off nullable basically says that if you are not sure whether you will have the data or not, then this will, what you are doing here, right? Checking whether this is uh, there, then return an optional empty. If it's not there, then return an optional off. It will do this for you. Okay. So even if I pass a null here, if we go here and you can see the value here, what it does. It takes the value. It basically checks if the value is null, then return an empty. Otherwise, return the off of value. So basically, what we did here, the checking of us manually, like let's say you would put an if block here, if the call succeeded, if the call succeeded, then return this, or you would write this in the else part, right? Let me actually do this thing. Let's say the API call succeeded. Is success, OK? Actually, I'm just going to show you this in private, private Boolean is success. Imagine that this is the API call. Okay. Uh, is success, is, this guy is actually calling your API or not. Okay. Uh, mm, yeah. Actually, let, in, let's do this. Uh, let's say this, that will be even more appropriate for you. Okay. 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 Understand what we're doing here. Okay. Let's say this get data internal call, right? It is the guy that actually calls the API. And this here internally within the library, it can either be a, a success or a failure. In case of a success, you would get a data. In case of a failure, you would not get anything. You would get a null. So here you're basically doing, if the get data gives me a null here, I will return an optional empty. If it does not return me a null, I'll wrap this inside an option. So from the consumer's point of view, 
it they have to check whether they have this thing or not okay from this guy's point of view it is making sure that the correct optional is going out instead of doing this thing you can simply because if you see here get data can be null cannot be null when you have a situation like this in, in instead of writing this thing you can simply write return return optional nullable dot, get data okay better get data theek okay? hai you avoided this if and else part okay any questions here i'm pretty sure someone here is confused tell me if somebody wants me to repeat this again the whole thing about optional sir yeah but again like uh, without using option also hmm. if we are key i mean we are attentive then we can handle manually also right yeah we but can handle yes but with optional we can get this lambda type of thing also one lambda addition of, lambda this, is, this one we, can, we are writing right yes yeah 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 so basically if you have optional then you can use start using lambda very like it your code becomes very concise and very short okay this is not possible uh, using traditional method right no you cannot you cannot you have to write this big method like you have to write these many codes and everything and then imagine like imagine you have 50 different let's say you are registering a customer on flipkart that has many steps register a customer take his name add his dependents uh, create his wallet all those steps let's say require bunch of these null checks right it will become very tedious instead you can just do this one line and you're done uh yeah so file of coding ha huh, it basically lambda was written for reducing the type of coding and if you ever learn something called haskell or erlang you'll see this is how they have in fact javascript which is now called ecmascript if you look at es7 or es6 if you ever work with it you will see things like this heavily used javascript started using lambdas way before java thought of doing it java is kind of slow in moving towards the functional language okay uh all right so i'll recap this uh you have to basically look at the optional from two point of view one is the library guy and other one is the consumer this library is the producer of optional this driver is the consumer of optional so when you have when the library says that i'll give you data it automatically the the consumer or the client automatically uses that the data is always going to be there okay you this is a promise you're making that uh, i will always give you the data but if you add optional what you're promising your user is that i will give you a wrapper but i don't guarantee that the data will always be there but i always guarantee that i'll give you a wrapper so this is a much more robust way of programming or writing methods because whoever is using it it is on their shoulder to basically check whether the data is there or not okay you as a provider have always given them something which is a wrapper okay uh then you have to look at it from the uh, provider's point of view okay uh like if you sorry if you look at it from the consumer's point of view it is up to you to check whether you want to uh, get the value or not or you want to be an idiot and just call the get method and then run into a null point exception it's up to you but the provider has already given you a wrapper and it's up to you to basically call this thing then from the provider's point of view there are three ways you can produce this thing okay if there is an internal call which is which is like fluctuating like it can either give a data or not give a data in that case you can basically do this check here if the data is there then return an optional of empty which means that there is no data if there is data for sure you basically go ahead and return an optional of basically these two things can be zipped into one single line of code which is optional dot off nullable get data any questions here so far this completes our course for today if you have any question let me know or we can end the session and and you won't have any uh, homework for this session but tomorrow when we uh, go through maps and basically the stream api where you have maps filter maps flat map and all that things uh, tomorrow you will have an assignment which is basically going to combine this and what we teach tomorrow okay cool if you have no questions i'll end the session thanks a lot for joining good night